Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson. Today I'd like to show you a few exercises aimed at beginners uh, and working on the main weaknesses beginners have at the piano. So these are working on the strength of the fifth, fourth, and third fingers in the right hand and in the left hand, five, four, and three. Working on stretching the fingers and then working on hand independence. Let's get started and I'll show you a few exercises to target these weak areas. For the first exercise, put your five fingers on the five notes show, as shown here, starting with C. So C, D, E, F, G, and you're using fingers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in the right hand. And what you'll do, for starters, is play the following pattern. and so on and so on. Basically, you'll start doing this as slow as you need to feel yourself pressing the keys evenly with equal force and waiting an equal amount of time between the notes. Evenness is very important when practicing. Don't try to play fast and you know play sloppily. Just concentrate on getting things nice and smooth, not on speed. As the saying goes, it's not that practice makes perfect, it's that perfect practice makes perfect. If you want to take this to the next level, you can hit the corresponding C major chord in the left hand when you hit the first note. So C major chord is fingers 1, 3, and 5, playing C, E, and G. and so on and so on. Now for the next level of com complexity, we're going to move this up the white keys. So... So we're going to go all the way up to F, and then start again from C. For the next level of complexity, the right hand, we're going to switch the chords a little bit every time you move up. The first chord is going to be a C major chord. The next chord will be a D major chord. Now, you don't really have to understand theory. All you need to know is that in the left hand, you'll press D, F sharp, and A. And in the right hand, you'll play the same pattern, but now using the following notes, D, E, F sharp, G, and A. So... Now, this is going to be more difficult than the white pattern you've already practiced because it places slightly different demands on the angles and amount of force you can exert with each finger, just by adding a, a black note. The next pattern, as you move up, is going to be an E minor, and you're going to play the following five notes, E, F sharp, G, A, and B. These guys. And then the last pattern is going to be an F minor. So here I'm playing the following notes, F, G, A flat, B flat, and C. Again, one note per finger. So put together, it sounds like this. And back to C. Again, start this very slowly. Make sure that you can hit each note with perfect evenness as perfectly as possible, of course. Uh, don't rush it. You know, you don't want to do it uh, quickly because that will just instill bad habits. Now, any exercise that you play in the right hand can be mirrored to the left hand. 
Contrary to what people initially think, if you play this pattern in the right hand, the corresponding, corresponding pattern in the left hand is not, but rather it's the mirrored one. So you start at the opposite end, G, and you work your way down. So one finger per note, and you have the same pattern but mirrored. G, F, E, D, C, D, E, D, C, D, E, F, G. Now you can mirror the same two exercises I've shown you, namely Those are the white sort of keys pattern going up. And then you can mirror the more complex chords. C, D, E minor, F minor, and back to C. And you can repeat this as many times as you want. Now this will take care of working on the last few fingers in each hand. The next exercise I'd like to show you has to do with stretching. And we're going to do this by working on octaves. So starting out, this is an octave. Basically you play a note and you play a note, the same note, above it. So here I'm playing an octave of C. And the first variation on this exercise, let's start from down here, is playing C, E, F, F sharp, G, F, E, and D. And again the idea is to play this as evenly as possible. so on and so on. The next variation on this exercise uh, <coughs> has you adding the right hand and the right hand here will play basically <coughs> the following form. When you're going up it's going to play a C major chord and this is what's called an inversion of a C major chord. Again the theory is not as important as just learning to play it because we're working on your technique and not theory here. So I'm playing a G, C, and an E in the right hand using my thumb, uh, second finger, and fourth finger. And when you're going down, starting from the G, you're going to play a G dominant 7. So here you're playing a G, B, and F using thumb, second, and fifth fingers. so on and so on. Again, remember, perfect practice makes perfect. Start as slowly as you need. The next level of this exercise will have you alternating between the notes in the left hand. So instead of hitting both notes and the octave together, you're going to play them one after the other. And everything needs to be executed evenly. Basically, so on. The same exercise can be done in the right hand as well. 
So in the left hand, you'll be playing a C major chord made out of the notes, the same notes, G, C, and E, played with the fifth, second, and first fingers, while the G dominant seventh chord will be played with these fingers, G uh, with the fifth finger, B with the third, and F with the thumb, the first. So. And of course, the variation in which your hand kind of moves like a spider. This will work on stretching your fingers. The last exercise I'd like to show you has to do with coordination between the hands. And for this exercise, we're going to play a simple melody in the right hand. You can actually, I mean, there are many different melodies that work with this. And we can just play something as simple as Mary Had a Little Lamb. So this should be fairly easy. The next level would be to play the chord at the beginning of each bar. I'll show you exactly which note you need to press down on the chord when you play this melody. So the first chord is a C major. And when you hit the E again, you hit the C major as well. The next chord is a G dominant seven and C. Again, C, C, G dominant 7, C. And you can see this appearing on the screen. You don't really, I think, need to rewind the video. You can just see exactly when you need to hit the different chords. The next level of this has you executing a pattern in the left hand. And the pattern is basically alternating between a bass and a chord. So, for the G, it's So what am I doing here? You'll see that basically I'm alternating between a bass and a chord. For the C major chord, I'm first playing a C, and then I'm hitting the entire chord. And again, everything needs to be done evenly. And so on and so on. For the G dominant seven chord, I'm hitting the G for the bass and then the chord itself. so on. When you start this out, first of all get the general motion of the left hand sort of under your belt. And when you come to combine both hands, start out very very slowly. You know, you will never get this down if you start at the full tempo. You basically, you can go as slowly as So really, and even slower than that. I've notated on the screen, as you can see, the exact positions where you need to hit the bass and where you need to hit the chord in the left hand. So you really just need to follow it 
and start out very slowly. You can work on each section independently, so you know every couple of notes, let's say every four or eight notes, uh, and then sort of string them together once you get them under control. That's it. I've shown you a few straightforward but challenging exercises that as beginners will help you get better at piano. You know, work on the main three things. Last few fingers, strength, stretching, and independence. That's it. I hope you've learned something interesting and I'll see you next time.